Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day to everyone. So welcome back to this course, the MFG 1213 Engineering Materials. So this will be the week 7 in chapter 6, Mechanical Properties of Metals and Alloy. So basically in this uh, chapter or, or in this section, I will divide uh, my um, lessons into three parts. Part 1, Part 2 and Part 3. So let us start with the part one all right in previous lecture you already learned on the concept of stress and strain whereby we know that in this concept of stress and strain we can apply a few types of uh, load which is under tension test compression test shear test and even torsion test and then you also uh, learned on the elastic deformation and plastic deformation all right so basically you have an idea what is stress strain all about okay here we will discuss detail on the tensile properties okay whereby the we will have three main point here this is the yield point the yield strength and also the tensile strength uh, in previous lecture I already um, touch or I already uh, explained detail about this proportional limit if let's say it, for example this is your stress strain uh, curve this is stress strain curve so this is the linear line okay and after that we if we keep on applying the load here and it become fracture here so this is f and this is your uts ultimate tensile strength or we can uh, denote as tensile strength okay so here during elastic deformation we can have this kind of scenario okay whereby we have this proportional limits this proportional limit, as I mentioned before, is the end or uh, the, the end of this linear line. Mean, meaning to say, if we apply load at this point, beyond this point, it will start deviate from being proportional to the stress. Okay, it starts to deviate okay, to this point. Alright, so this A and B point is very close to each other that we cannot determine it and it's really difficult to determine it so how do we determine this yield strength by using this offset which is 0.002 offset okay uh, by measuring this 0.002 offset then we make some parallel line with this linear lines and this intersection Okay, this intersection between, the, between this parallel line to this graph is the strength, a uh, yield strength of this particular material. Okay, so uh, from this graph, we know that this is the point where we can measure the yield strength or we can identify the yield strength of that particular material. Okay, so this is the yield strength. This is the yield point. And another thing, we will look into the tensile strength where is the tensile strength so if we uh, apply continue apply the load say for example here we apply the load and this will be your tensile strength before it fracture again when we apply the load after tensile strength it start your material will start to necking okay and it will become fracture Okay, so this is the yield strength, denote as uh, sigma y. Okay, so what is yield strength? It's stress at which noticeable when plastic deformation has occurred. So basically, it is when uh, strain plastic strain is equal to zero point zero zero two. Okay, as I mentioned previously, this is stress strain. So we have this kind of information, right? This kind of graph. And this is linear graph, right? So because we cannot see the uh, yield strength here, so we try to uh, measure using uh, zero point zero zero two offset. So this uh, parallel line, the intersection between this line with the graph, is uh, denoted as the yield strength. So what is strain uh, P? Okay, as we know that this is elastic region right this is elastic region and 
beyond the uh, yield strength, okay, yield strength, this is the plastic deformation. So we know that for elastic regions, it can be recoverable once the load is removed from that material. But for plastic deformation, it's a permanent deformation. Even we uh, move the load. All right. So here, let us look at this uh, graph, which is tensile versus uh, stress versus strain. Okay. Say for example, if we uh, give a load, try to give a load along this line, all right, up to this, okay, up to this level or up to this. What happened to our material? Okay, it will, uh, our material will came back along this line because it's in linear region. Okay, so in linear region, it will come back into this line. All right, and if we continue giving the load, and it will okay go something like this. Okay, All right. Say for example, this is this is the UTS. Okay, so what happened here? Once we remove the load in this particular point, our materials will come back to this uh, line, which is uh, parallel with this linear line. Okay, so means that this is the total strain, right? Supposedly, this is the total strain. Okay, but actually, this is the elastic, which is your elastic strain right and this is your plastic strain okay, that's why we call it as strain p which is referring to plastic deformation we cannot uh, this is cannot recoverable but this one in this area this area can be recoverable because it's a uh, strain elastic okay okay because we need to define this sigma y, your yield strength, so we need to do this offset, right, this offset. So this offset, 0 0.002, is basically, what? It is basically our strain in the plastic deformation. All right, so you can, once you uh, make this parallel line, and what you have here, you can determine the yield strength. Okay. So note for 2 inch sample, which is strain is equal to 0 0.02. So using this formula, your delta Z will be 0 0.004 inch. Okay, alright, let us look at some of the comparison, comparison of yield strength between uh, four types of material, metal alloy, graphite, ceramic, and, or any semiconductor, some polymers, and composite. So we can see here the steel uh, give a very high yield strength, meaning that these metals or metals alloys have um, a larger elastic region, okay, compared to the other material. All right, and then we also uh, look at this composite fiber, okay, all right. So these are the example, and also polymer, PC, PET, PVC. HDP and uh, some of the graphite material. Okay, all right. Let us look at the tensile strength. Uh, basically, we, we already cover all these things. The tensile strength, uh, which is uh, referring to the stress strain, engineering stress strain curve. So what we have here, there's a four point, four major important things. Number one is the uh, yield strength. Yield strength, which is your Sigma y here, this is number one, and number two is the proportional limit. This is p, which is referring to your proportional limit. What does it mean by proportional limit? Okay, it's the end of the uh, end point of the linear line. Okay, meaning to say if we exceed or if we apply load beyond this point, that it will become uh, plastic deformations. All right, because uh, we need to find this yield, yield strength. So, we need to do some 0 0.002 offset. Alright. And then number 3, we have this tensile strength. Referring to UTS, ultimate tensile strength. And last one is the fracture strength. 
Group 4 is the fracture. Okay. Alright, so these are typical injuring stress strain curve. Okay, for structural application, the yield strength is usually more important properties than tensile strength. Why? Because once the yield stress has passed, the structure has deformed beyond acceptable limits because it will deform into plastic deformation. So this yield strength is really, really important during applications. Okay, let us look details into it. So before that, we uh, these are the uh, tensile strength comparison between those material, metal, graphite, polymer and ceramic. You can see here different types of material, uh, different types of group of material give a uh, variation of tensile strength. Where the steels uh, have quite high tensile strength compared to the rest and polymer still yeah, uh, give the lowest, one of the lowest tensile strength. Alright, okay, next we go for the example. Alright, so example problem 3. Alright, let us look at this question. From the tensile stress strain behavior, okay, for the brass specimen, it's a brass specimen shown in figure 6.12, determine the following. Alright, A, the modulus of elasticity. Alright, from this graph or from this stress strain behavior, we can uh, actually know, right, the, the modulus of elasticity. We can measure the modulus of elasticity. Okay, from this uh, yield, from this linear line, okay, this is uh, the larger scale. So, we measure from here. So, this will uh, determine your E value, All right? which is your E value. And number two, the yield strength at a strain offset of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.002. The yield strength, meaning that your sigma y. Okay. So, because we have this offset, 0 0.002, okay, 0 0.002, somewhere here, and then we make parallel line, then this line which intersect between the graph is the stress, yield stress. Okay, so you can read here and that will be the answer. Alright, see, the maximum load that can be sustained by a cylindrical specimen Having an original diameter, uh, 12.8 mm. Okay, so this question asks us to uh, to measure the maximum load, which is your F, that can be sustained by a cylindrical specimen. So your material will be cylindrical. So you have this diameter, the D naught is equal to 12.8 mm. So you need to measure the load. Okay, you need to find the load. Alright. Okay, and D, the change in length of specimen originally 250 mm long. So, your specimen would uh, be around 250 mm. This is your L note. That is subjected to a tensile stress at 345 megapascal. So, you have tensile stress which is 345 megapascal. So maybe somewhere here, 345 megapascal, somewhere here. Okay, so what you need to measure is you need to identify this delta L. All right, for the D question, for question D. Okay, let us look at the uh, solution for all questions. All right. Solution A. Okay, in question A, uh, it, the question asks us to find the modulus of elasticity, right? So, A value is referring to the slope, okay? In a linear region. So, this is the linear region. You will find the slope, which is delta uh, sigma, okay? The difference between the D, uh, between the sigma here, okay? Over this value. So, this is your sigma, delta, sigma, sorry, uh, delta stress and also delta strain. Okay? So, what you have here, so here, this is the E value and you just uh, plug in the formula here, 150 over uh, minus 0 megapascal for the delta sigma or delta stress and for the strain, you can read here somewhere 
which is a 0 0.0016 minus 0. Then you will get this kind of uh, uh, answer, which is 93.8 gigapascal, which is very close to the value of uh, 97 gigapascals given for brass in table 6.1. So you can refer to table 6.1, okay? Uh, the E value, which is your modulus elastic for this typical brass material. So it's almost similar, all right? It's like uh, 90, 97. This is 94, okay? Okay, next question B. The question B asks us about the uh, yield strength at a strain offset of 0 0.002. They ask us to find the yield strength. Okay. So... You just uh, read from here, this is the yield strength after you do some 0 0.002 offset. So, from here, you can read the value here. Uh, so, the, the answer would be 250. Okay, 250 megapascal or around 36,000 PSI. Okay, somewhere here. Right, it's a really direct question. From the graph, you can read it and you can get the answer. All right, C, uh, B, all right, then we go for C question. Uh, question number C is the maximum load that can be sustained. So they ask us about the, they ask us, the question asks us to find the load, which is your F value. Okay, you, we know that F is equal to sigma, uh, sigma times A naught, or we normally use sigma, uh, your stress is equal to F over A naught. Alright, so you simplify or you, you arrange this formula. So, F is equal to sigma time A0. Alright, so A0, you know that A0, the area, the cross-sectional area is uh, defined by the diameter over 2, okay, square root. Okay, so uh, times with pi. Okay, so we know that our stresses in this... Uh, uh, in the question, the stresses is around 450 megapascal. So, you just plug in the value here using this formula and you can have the force is equal to 57,900 Newton. Uh, simple, right? You just know how to use the equation and then you plug in all the value into the equation. Alright, C, okay, done with C and we go for the question D. So, next question. Question D. Okay, question D asks us to uh, measure the change in length, which is, I mentioned previously, it's a delta L. Alright, so delta L, uh, he gives us a stress at this point, this uh, 300, around 345 megapascal at this point of stresses. So, 345 uh, megapascal, somewhere here, okay. Okay, and from this, you know that, uh, which is a point A, yeah, this is in point A. So, this point A referring to 345 megapascal. Okay, from this point A, just make some line here until you get this uh, string. Okay, at this point, <clears throat> the uh, strain is approximately around 0 0.06, isn't it? So, 0 0.06 and using the formula, which is uh, strain is equal to delta L over L0, you know the L0 value, which is 250 mm and you also know that this strain is 0 0.06, okay? So, you just plug in all the value and you will get delta L is equal 15 mm. Okay, it's very simple, it's quite direct. Just, uh, just that you need to know how to use the formula and how to read the question, what the question wants you to calculate. All right. Alright, let us go uh, to this ductility. What is ductility? Okay, ductility is basically a measure of material's ability to undergo some plastic deformation before its fracture. Okay, if you look into this uh, stress strain curve, 
Okay, you can difference between a uh, brittle material and also ductile materials. If the material is ductile, so it will undergo some plastic deformation. So this is plastic deformation. Plastic deformation. Whereas for brittle material, they do not have any plastic deformation. Okay, so for this blue color. All right. This utility also can be defined by the percents of elongations. Okay, using this formula, percent elongations, which is LF minus L0 over L0 times 100. And also, we can define this ductility by the percents of reduction area using this formula. Percents of air reduction is equal to A0 minus AF over A0 times 100. Okay, so... Let us look at this figure. If we apply load here, uh, for example, tensile load. Okay, this is tensile loading. So the area of this uh, region will be reduced to this AF area. Okay, so this, this reduction also we can call it as ductility. And in the same time, this length, okay, L0, will uh, getting higher because of this tensile loading okay so this lf the difference between this lo and also the lf times with 100 so this percent of elongation also we refer it as plastic or as ductility okay so normally this ductility is increased when the temperature is increased why okay it's because during the higher temperature the dislocation is easy to take over this location so this location movement is very easy when we apply some heat here okay when uh, we apply in this higher temperature so when this location movement is easy so in the same time the formation or plastic deformations or the materials is easy to deform. Materials easy to deform. Or in other words, the ductility of that typical uh, of that particular material is higher. All right. Let us look at this toughness and also resilience of material. Basically, this toughness and resilience properties is uh, related to energy, right? Okay, for toughness, uh, toughness is the ability of the material to absorb energy to break a unit volume of materials. Alright, uh, it happened in the uh, plastic deformations. Okay, if you compare with the uh, resilient, resilience, the amount of energy that being absorbed by that materials is uh, measured under the elastic region. Okay, so let us look at this toughness. So from this curve, stress strain curve, this is stress strain curve, uh, the area here, the area under this curve is representing the toughness of your material. Let's say for the large toughness, for example, metal in this uh, green color. So this region referring to the toughness of your material. Okay. And also for small toughness like ceramic materials, only uh, this region. And lastly, it's for polymer here. So this red color is representing the uh, small, very small toughness for this polymer material. So this uh, toughness can be measured by the impact testing. Okay, so we use impact testing to measure the toughness of your material and the unit. For this toughness is energy per unit volume. J per meter cube. Alright. Alright, now let us look at the resilience of the materials. What does it mean by resilience? Resilience is uh, also related to energy. It's the ability of your material to store energy in elastic region. Okay? So, uh, if you look at, to this uh, figure, which is stress versus strain curve, so, in this, uh, this area is the resilience of your materials, the area under this elastic region. Okay, so basically this is the formula, alright? 
which is ur is equal to uh, integration uh, of sigma delta strain which is your strain from 0 to 0 what 0 from 0 to strain yield strain so here you can see here this is the yield strain okay so this res resilience which is ur is a measure at this uh, elastic region okay under this sigma y region okay all right if we because this uh, is uh, basically uh, linear and we assume it's a linear stress strain curve so basically if we look into this uh, it's like a triangle triangle shape right it's a triangle shape so uh, the area for triangle shape is basically half times b for example this is b times b times h right so this this area so if we present with this a resilience so this resilient uh, for the ur is equal half times with the delta uh, sigma y which is this value this is sigma y right times with the strain y okay so this we come up with this uh, equation okay so for this application for the resilience applications we can see here uh, this is what we call pole vault okay so you you use this pole because it is elastic it will uh, recoverable okay it will go for its uh, original shape once the load is removed okay same goes here so these are the application for this resilience properties okay let us look at this true stress strain what does it mean by true stress strain okay in previous lecture we already learned the stress strain behavior okay whereby we can have this kind of graph uh, here we have the uh, yield strength or yield stress and we have UTS this is your ultimate tensile strength and as well as the stress in fracture so bear in mind this is an engineering stress strain okay engineering stress strain because in engineering stress strain the stress uh, we use this formula which is F divided by A naught the cross-section area is referring to the original cross-section area but if we compare with the true stress which is sigma t your true stress strain the formula is quite different whereby the load which is f is divided by ai ai means the cross-sectional uh, area instantaneous cross-sectional area what does it mean by that okay basically these true stresses refer to the load applied this is the load applied to the actual area at that moment of measurement this is the actual area actual area which is referring to the instantaneous area okay for example here so we have this point point eight one and point two this is point three so at this point we have different uh, load load right so this is f f1 f2 and f3 at this particular load all right at this uh, point so basically we have this a area okay for example this is your material okay so this area this is the area and then by increasing the load okay at this particular point which is number two the area of this specimen will become reduced okay starting to reduce because of the necking so it will reduce so a1 a2 is less than a1 okay and also at this number three point the area of these at this point uh, will become much lesser okay so this is a3 so a3 is lesser than a2 is lesser than a1 so at that particular point we measure uh, the the true the true stress is measure uh, during the load apply at that actual area okay at this actual area 
So meaning to say, okay, as the actual area keeps reducing, okay, because of the necking, it keeps reducing, right? The true stress is a uh, much or uh, is higher than engineering strain. Okay, so we, if you look here, the blue color is engineering strain. Okay, it will become something like this. Okay, but the true stress is higher. Okay, so we can get this uh, kind of graph because of the uh, we measure the actual area which keep on reducing. So we can come up with this kind of graph. Okay, so remember different between engineering stress strain and also true stress strain. So here, I uh, give you the, the, the formula of the true stress and also true strain. And this is the, the, the formula for the uh, correlation between relation between uh, between true stress and also engineering stress. And the same, same thing here, this is true strain and also the uh, engineering strain. Okay, this is basically what is engineering stress, which is denoted as sigma. Uh, the instantaneous loss applied to a specimen divided by its cross-sectional area, which is uh, uh, referring to the A0, the original area. Okay, but for true stress, which is sigma t, the load F divided by the instantaneous cross-sectional area, which is referring to AI over which deformation is occur. So, uh, when this uh, necking, the, the actual is meaning that it's referred to the actual uh, area at that moment of measurement. Okay. Load divided by actual area, yeah, this is actual area, in the naked down region continues to rise to the point of fracture. So it contrasts to the engineering stress. That's why we we will have those uh, something like this the for the uh, true stress strain curve. Okay, this is stress and this is strain for true stress strain curve. We have this kind of graph because it continues to rise. Okay, due to the um, reducing of the actual area. Okay, so these are the formula, true stress here, same thing, and this is true, true strain, okay? And if the volume change occurs during the formation, then we can use this kind of formula, and this is the relation between true stress and uh, engineering stress, and also the true, stress, true strain with the engineering strain. All right, okay, for some metal, for some metal and alloys, the region of the true stress strain curve from the onset of plastic deformation to the point at which necking begins may be approximated by this equation where true stress is equal to K, uh, true strain, N, okay, power of N. So, this K and N are constants, alright. So, this is the N and K value for typical materials, for some of the materials, right? And this parameter N is often termed uh, the strain hardening exponent. Okay, so let us look at what are these strain hardening mechanisms. Okay, let us look at this hardening. What is hardening? So, basically in, in hardening, in strain hardening, it is an increase in sigma y which is your yield strength due to plastic deformation so let us look at this curve stress strain curve okay for larger n so this uh, red color represent if the n is large okay and if let's say small n so it re represent this blue color all right so this curve fit to the stress strain response which is your this is your true stress is equal to k uh, times with the uh, true strain, this is the formulation, and uh, the, to the power of n. So n mostly for some steels, we use 0 0.15, and also uh, for some coppers, we use uh, n is equal to 0 0.5. So it's, uh, we can use the previous table to determine uh, the numbers or the value of n. Alright, so what happened in the during plastic deformations for the strain hardening. So let's say we apply some load here. First, 
this blue color so it's loaded all right at certain point so this will be your original or the, your initial real strength and then what happened if we continue applying the load it will goes to this uh, line okay and at this point at this particular point which is d point we remove we remove the load remove the load so what happened your during the unloading cycle the curve trace a near straight line path from the point of unloading d it means that this curve will go into this uh, linear into this line it's parallel with the linear line here all right and then if the load is reapplied then we apply another load the curve will traverse essentially the same linear portion in the direction opposite to the unloading all right so here after we remove the load uh, basically the lines will go your material will go into this line right because it's recover okay it's recover You're going back to this original all right and once we apply or we reapply the load this curve will traverse essentially the same linear portion so we traverse back into here okay and and then a new yielding will again occur so this is this will be your new yielding All right and then we continue give the load and it will continue at this line okay same same happen if we unload material at this particular point say for example this is e point we remove we remove the load right what have what happened is the curve will trace a near straight line path okay following the linear path so we go into this path and then we try to reapply the load again reapply the load reapply the load and what happened uh, the same linear portion they will go into the same linear portion same direction and this point will be your new yield strength okay maybe number two this is one okay so for this uh, um, this is we call as strain hardening okay let's look at this example four okay ductility and through stress at fracture computations okay so a cylindrical specimen of steel having an original diameter of 12.m 12.8 mm okay so the uh, steel having original diameter so it's a cylinder here so this original diameter d naught is equal to 12.8 mm is a tensile tested so we apply tensile test okay uh, to a fracture and found to have an engineering fracture strength which is uh, F is equal to 460 megapascal. If its cross sectional diameter at fracture is 10.7 mm, determine. Right? Determine means that the area at the fracture is equal to uh, the diameter. Sorry, the diameter at fracture is equal to 10.7 mm. So the question the, the question asks us to uh, determine the ductility in terms of percent reduction area right and b the true stress at fracture okay let us look at the solution the first question asks us to find the the ductility okay the ductility is refer, uh, represents as the percent of reduction area so we just me measure the using the formula which is uh percent of reduction area is equal to uh, AF minus A naught over A naught times with the 100. Okay, so here we just plug in the value, uh, the diameter, okay, the final diameter and also this is during fracture diameter over the uh, 
original diameter times with 100. So we will get this uh, percentage of reduction area, which is 30%. All right, B. Okay, question B asks us to find the true stress. Okay, true stress is defined by equation 6.15, where in this case, the area taken as the fracture area, which is AR. However, the load at fracture must first be computed from the fracture strength. Okay, so from the fracture strength, so we know that this is sigma actually, this is sigma. So, stress is equal to F over A0, right? So, we need to measure this F value, the load, at this particular fracture. Okay, so F is equal to stress over A0, whereby our stress, okay, it's given in the question. Uh, our stress at fracture is equal to 460 uh, Newton meter squared. And we need to time with the original area. Okay, the original area, which is 128.7 mm squared. Okay, and at the end, we, can, we will get this uh, value, which is our load, which is F is equal to 59,200. Measure the true stress. Okay, we know that the true stress is equal to F over the AI, which is the actual area. Okay, so uh, the actual area here uh, is basically uh, d over 2 squared pi, where this d is 10.72 mm squared pi, isn't it? So let us uh, look here. It's quite confusing here. Some error here. Okay, so from this, we have... Uh, the load which is 59200 minus 10.7 over 2 uh, squared pi so the the answer would be 660 mega pascal okay quite easy right so uh, based on this question you need to understand or you need to know which formula that you need to use when you go for the true stress, either true stress or uh, engineering stress. All right, let us look at this example 5, problem number 5. Calculation of strain hardening. Okay, strain hardening exponent, which is your n value. Okay, compute the strain hardening exponent n in the equation 6.19 for an alloy in which a true stress referring your sigma t is equal to 415 megapascal produce a true strain of 0 0.1 which is your true strain 0 0.1 assume a value of uh, 1035 megapascal for k so this requires some algebraic manipulation of equation 9.6.19 so that and becomes the dependent parameter. So you need to do some uh, rearrangement of equation. So this is accomplished by taking log logarithm and rearranging the equation. So solving for n because uh, in previous uh, lecture, we I already given you the formula of this, which is um, true stress is equal to K uh, uh, strain or epsilon t, this is your true strain, okay, uh, to the power of n. Okay, so we need to measure this n value, and from this equation, we rearrange it by taking logarithm. Okay, we arrange, we arrange this one into this equation. So n is equal to log sigma t over log k divided by log epsilon t, which is your true strain. So, we just plug in the value here. This is your uh, stress t, true stress, and this is your k value, and this is your true strain. And at the end, you will get this n value, which equal to 0 0.4. Alright, I think this is the end of uh, part 1. Okay, you already learned on the uh, tensile properties. 
uh, yielding and yield strength and also the ductility of materials toughness and resilience of your materials and also you known the uh, true stress and strain the difference between true stress and strain and engineering stress strain all right so we will continue next in part two all right with this thank you